G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Meter here. There's been a lot of interest lately in these Azalea tree farms. This is likely because you don't even need a player to place down the saplings in order to grow the tree. Instead, you can just bone meal a moss block using a dispenser until you get the sapling, then bone meal the sapling and get the tree. This enables the possibility of a fully autonomous tree farm, along with a fully autonomous rooted dirt farm, both of which do not need the player present to run. To begin with, we need a good way to detect when we've generated the azalea plant. Fortunately, Tuno to Name invented a really elegant solution for detecting the azalea tree. All it involves is some water which tries to flow into a space. If the plant is present, the water will not flow, and we can detect this as the farm being idle. He even went and made a fully functioning azalea tree farm. So check that out down in the description. But what we're going to do right now is see if we can ramp this process up as fast as possible. Now my idea is this. We want the quasi power, this piston, so that the very instant that the water starts flowing, the piston will wipe it out. But of course, we also want the piston to retract again, allowing the water to flow. We then need to make sure to quasi power the piston again before the water starts flowing. Now in case you are unfamiliar with how quasi power works, let's take the simple example of a repeater powering a piston for a block. When I power this repeater, it will send out block updates not only in this space, but also in this space, meaning that if there is a block here that receives the power and a piston in this space, the block update which comes from the repeater into the space where the piston is located is what tells the piston that it needs to extend. If I instead position the repeater like this, a block updates will look like this. As you can see, none of the block updates actually occupy the space where the piston is. Therefore, even though this block is powered, it does not tell the piston that it needs to extend. However, if we place a block next to the piston, we have now sent that update to the piston and told it to extend. And these block updates can be caused by a range of phenomenon. For example, the situation that we want to use is to quasi power the piston and have it updated by the water flowing in front of it, causing it to immediately extend. But now we need to make sure that we can also unpower the piston and send the update telling it to retract. This can be done using a very simple and cheap to build block update detector, which involves a sticky piston and a few blocks like so. We then have a regular piston over here, a lever, a block right here, and then we just have dust, like so, and a block right here. If we then send any updates to this system, as you can see, it gets activated. However, we aren't yet sending any updates to this through the water. So what we need to do is quasi power this piston right here, which will then send the update to this system, which will then need to unpower this piston and then reset before the water starts flowing again. Not only can you quasi power pistons by placing a power block like so, you can also do it using something known as dust redirection. So if I put some dust like so, as you can see, this dust is pointing into this piston and should be powering it. However, when dust is redirected, it doesn't send a block update, meaning this piston is now quasi powered. And notice how if I update this sticky piston first, this piston is unaffected because if this sticky piston starts extending first, it will redirect the dust immediately and therefore, even though this piston receives an update, it's no longer powered. If, however, I update this piston first, as you can see, it's now getting updated by the water. However, for some reason, it keeps pooping out after some time. And honestly, I can't really explain this. If any of you eggheads can figure it out, 
feel free to leave a comment down below. In order to get around this, you can actually use the shape change of this stair to stop the water from flowing while also not sending any block updates. So if I just put the water here, you can now see that the system clocks itself continuously. If you look down at my chat, you'll notice that it has this weird cycle of four sets of five game ticks followed by a single 10 game tick cycle. However, because we're getting five game ticks most of the time, this should be the fastest possible that you can actually cycle the azalea plants. Now that we have a working module that cycles the plants as quickly as possible, all we need to do is add a master moss block that gets bone milled by a dispenser every cycle and another dispenser that gets clocked when we detect an azalea plant. And what this will do is grow the azalea plant into a tree so that we can then harvest the logs. If I switch this on and update our piston, we can see the system will constantly cycle until it finds an azalea plant and grows the tree and immediately removes the log. And the beautiful thing is, this whole system automatically clocks itself through the entire cycle of generating the plant, growing the tree, and removing the logs before going back to cycling through the plants. And this module is so small. And if we want to harvest the entire tree, all we need to do is add some sticky piston pushes, like so. We need to make sure that we put logs in this space, because azalea trees will check a 3 by 3 area centered on the azalea plant for blocks. And if there are any non-log blocks present in this space, then the tree will refuse to grow. In order to power these sticky pistons, we can just connect it up to the main system. We also add just one more thing here to disconnect these sticky pistons if there hasn't been a tree grown. As for harvesting the root dirt, I managed to make a really elegant system for removing the dirt. However, I just can't seem to figure out how to make a reliable stone generator that can work on an erratic feed rate. Because this one just keeps generating cobblestone, which will stop the farm from working. This farm probably won't be very worthwhile harvesting dirt anyway, given that you get so few trees for the amount of bone meal that you spend, that you'd literally be burning bone meal just to harvest dirt. So I will be focusing primarily on harvesting the logs for the rest of this video. So now, if I activate the system, it should be harvesting the entire tree. There we go. As you can see, azalea trees are very short. In fact, the shortest they can generate is two blocks high, which is very tiny. I've also found that the tallest that they can generate is five blocks. You can already tell this module is very fast at growing trees. But despite this, it just takes a very long time to find an azalea plant. In fact, with every single attempt, there is an 11 in 96 chance that you even get an azalea plant per moss block. In order to improve our chances, I managed to double up the farm with this dual core module. Thick warping the dual core module for 10 hours, we obtained about 3,600 oak logs per hour from about 1,000 tree growths per hour, which means we get about 3.5 logs per tree. This farm is also a first debugger, consuming about 13,776 bone mill per hour. And I swear that the stars have aligned here, as one of El Manga's moss farm modules produces exactly 6,370 bone mill per hour. This means with two of Vilmanga's bone mill modules, plus the additional bone mill that we get if we decided to compost all of these items that get produced by the Azalea Tree Farm module, which comes out to about 528 bone mill per hour, we get almost exactly the same amount of bone mill that the Azalea Tree Farm consumes, which means 
This tree farm module will be perfectly matched with El Mango's moss farm. But before we can go and connect up the moss farm modules, it'll work out what we need to do about converting these logs into their item form. To start with, I tried just to connect the tree farm up to my TNT efficient blast chamber that I designed in the previous video. But this proved very difficult because the erratic feed rate of entire columns of logs could always break these block elevators that merge them into a single block stream. And anyway, the extremely low rates of the Azalea tree farm doesn't justify all of this effort to get maximum TNT efficiency. Instead, we can custom build a blast chamber for the Azalea tree farm, which gives us the best compromise. I started with a layout which looks like this. This derives from the principles that we established with the TNT efficient blast chamber, where we have three blocks in the middle, we give the TNT space for its ray casting to damage blocks. And then we have a two block thick wall on either side. The only issue is that operating this horizontally, you can get items that get left behind like this, which with the next blast, get deleted. And I'd much prefer to not have any item loss. We also must consider that trees can come into here at any height from two blocks all the way to five blocks. The best way to prevent items from being lost is to actually push the block columns downwards, therefore gravity will pull the items away from the danger zone. And it turns out if you just add some downwards facing pistons like so, to convert the entire column from a horizontal block column, the one that's going downwards, we can actually make a fairly efficient TNT blast chamber that can handle the various growth heights. That so we can grow five tall trees. Or two tall trees. And when we initiate the blast, As you can see, the items can't be left behind. An additional benefit that I realized is that we can also use these horizontal pushes as a buffer to ensure that we can actually move the entire block column at the very instant the TNT detonates. So if I just put the correct delay on all these repeaters, we can add in our simple entityless TNT duper, like so, and watch the fireworks. So now that we have a reliable source of bone meal and a way to turn the logs into the item form, we need to fit everything together as compact as possible to make it easy to operate without the player. Now this is a crazy azalea tree farm. The beauty of this system is that it can all run under the footprint of only a single portal chunk loader. So if I use F3 plus G to open up the chunk debug, you can clearly see that every part of the farm fits underneath the entity processing region around this portal chunk loader. And we need not worry about redstone components being in these chunks outside the 3x3 entity processing area because around that we have a 5x5 redstone processing area. This is also the reason why we have these blast shields here in order to prevent item entities from falling outside of the entity processing chunks where they'll sit there indefinitely and build up until the player decides to load the area and suddenly there's a billion entities built up in a chunk which wasn't entity processing. So what this means is that you can simply switch the farm on and leave the area, leaving it running wherever you go. And granted 3,600 logs per hour means you'll only be filling up about two shulker boxes per hour. So these azalea tree farms are definitely slower than your player based universal tree farms. But given the entire farm is capable of running completely independently of the player in the background, it should be a perfect addition to a single player world or a very busy server where you do not have time to sit around placing down saplings. And if you want to try building the farm yourself, be sure to grab yourself the schematic from the description 
and align the green square with a chunk. However, I should point out that what you will not see in the schematic is the alignment of these hopper carts to collect the stuff that grow inside the chamber. We have two carts for each growth chamber. The one inside of the moss block underneath the growth chamber is aligned against a honey block with another hopper cart underneath that also aligned to a honey block. I've just encased it with glass here in order to make things look nicer. For the central moss block, we have one minecart directly inside of the moss block. And then this minecart just underneath was actually aligned using a curved rail. In order to align this minecart, you want to place down the rails like this, remove those two rails, put the hopper back, also put this dropper here, and then you can place down the hopper minecart on top, Break the rail, break this block, then align another cart underneath to something like a chain or an iron bar. Like so. And then you can go ahead and zero tick blocks in to encase the minecarts and prevent them from being messed with by entities pushing them around. There we go, now our minecarts are nice and safe. And we can collect all the items that come out from these moss blocks. And that should be all she wrote for this crazy azalea tree farm. I hope you enjoyed going through the design process with me, and I will see you next time.